Hey, I'm James from Smoking Head Barbecue, and Kamado Joe has finally come out with my favorite accessory, the Joe Tisserie, for one of my favorite grills, the Kamado Joe Jr. Except for they didn't and they haven't, as that is not a Joe Tisserie, but it is a rotisserie unit specifically designed for the Kamado Joe Jr. Now, Full disclosure, I ordered this last year and I don't remember the exact price, but at any given time in the year, there are sometimes some smoking deals, <laughs> pun intended, on the Kamado Joe Jr. where in that two to $300 US range, you can pick yourself up a brand new Jr. And from memory, by the time this was all done and I imported it from Europe, the cost of this to my door was nearly from memory what I believe I paid for my Kamado Joe Jr. So this is not what we would call inexpensive. And unfortunately, lately, there's been a whole bunch of accessories that are starting to cross into the cost of either things like an acorn or getting into the 50% or upper 50% range of the Joe Jr. itself. But I still had to have it as soon as I saw this. And this is one of a few big surprises that I have planned this year for the Kamado Joe Jr. For years, I've shared that the Joe Tisserie is one of my all-time favorite accessories for any Kamado. It just opens up a whole new, not only experience, but flavors that you just don't get with traditional grilling methods. And it has made sort of my favorite, tied with the soapstone, every year that I've ever been asked, what are some of my favorite accessories? The Joe Tisserie is up there. And this is one of a few big surprises that I have this year for the Joe Jr. So while these aren't officially Kamado Joe branded accessories, I'm excited to see if they provide the same experience that I've fallen in love with using the Kamado Joe branded versions on my grills over the past couple years. So I couldn't think of a better cook to put this rotisserie unit through the test than one of my all time favorite rotisserie cooks, which is some chicken wings. So let's move over to the kitchen. I'll actually uh, clean this out while we're here, start a fire, and we're gonna season up some wings and I'll share an updated uh, rub recipe, my wing dust recipe, which is posted on my website, smokingdadbarbecue.com, which works great for things like wings uh, and isn't overpowering with salt if you use sort of my favorite Texas salt, pepper, garlic rub, which is amazing on brisket or pulled pork. You can get a little bit overpowering on thinner cuts like ribs and chicken wings. So I've got an updated version that I've shared in my last couple uh, recipes, but I just finally posted it uh, on the website. So if you're looking to follow along, you can get the uh, Coles notes or the written version on the website. Let's fire it up and then we can go get our wings ready, toss them on the rotisserie. Open up a fresh bag of Fogo. I'm going with the uh, black bag today is that's a little bit smaller size. Smaller size is great for things like our Kamado Joe Jr. Pull out our deflector plate as well as our grid razor. Shake out my kick ash basket. And if you saw my gift guide last year, you already saw this. This is the kick ash can, which as you can see, one touch, we've got all our ash out. Dump this, drop that back in there. Our kick ash basket, a little bit more fresh Fogo. These Believe it or not, these are the smaller pieces compared to the yellow bag. And grab our grill blazer grill gun. Fire that up. Bottom vents all the way open. And our top vent on our smokeware cap. I don't know if you can see that, the angle, but that is in the all the way open position. And if you already got my uh, vent guide that I have for common settings on all Kamados, including the Joe Jr. Classic and Big Joe, I've also updated it with the Smokeware Caps. So if you already bought it, there's a free update. If you didn't get that in your email, automatically reach out, let me know. And if you're looking for a guide, that's also on the website. If you're curious, how do I achieve uh, common temperatures, whether you have the cap, daisy wheel, or the control tower tap, that is on the uh, website. Let's go get our wings ready. All right, we've got everything ready. I brought out my Napoleon basket just so you can maybe get a visual representation. I know that the Napoleon basket holds about five pounds of wings. The Kamado Joe basket can hold about six pounds of wings. This pas uh, this packet from Costco is almost exactly uh, five pounds. So I'll be curious to see what we can fit in here. My guess is about half. It's a little bit taller, but much shorter. So let's make up our rub recipe. Just need an empty container. We're gonna start with one full capful. Uh, up to the line, which I've confirmed is exactly two tablespoons. So if you hear me say a full cap, that's two tablespoons. Half cap is one tablespoon. And again, that's all written out uh, on the website. I'll take you fast forward while I grind up some fresh cracked black pepper with my pepper cannon. Looks good. 
equal amount diamond crystal kosher salt. I also put on the website, if you're doing uh, something else I love with chicken, is a buttermilk brine along with some salt. You can do that in the buttermilk for four hours and then do a partial dry brine for four hours. Or you could just do what we're doing right here with a dry brine and do that overnight and end up with very similar results from a salt content perspective. And then the not recommended, what I'm doing right now is make the rub and apply it right before cooking. So we'll just get crispier skin if we had the foresight to plan to do that uh, a day in advance. We're gonna do two tablespoons of granulated garlic. No, that doesn't look too thick, but you don't want garlic powder, you want granulated. One tablespoon of uh, granulated onion. Again, not powder, you want granulated. One tablespoon of paprika. And I've put a couple teaspoons of cayenne pepper in the recipe, but again, this is just your eye. It has to be just a pinch. Let's see all our layers there. Let's mix that up until everything's incorporated. Looks good, nice color. This is very similar to, as I mentioned earlier, my Texas salt, pepper, garlic rub. It's just a lot less salt forward. So you can get away with that. In fact, you want that on things like a brisket or a pulled pork. But if you were to be brining a rack of ribs, which are really thin or things like our wings, that can be overpowering. So this similar profile, but uh, far more suitable for wings and or ribs is what I would grab if I was doing an overnight dry brine or even what we're doing right now with a ply right before we get them into our basket. I'm gonna season all these as my plan is just to vac seal and freeze for another day, whatever we don't get to fitting into today's rotisserie basket. Season the other side. Same thing as our Napoleon basket, we have these sort of two tumbler pieces. We do not want to pack tight to this on the uh, bottom piece and uh, tight here, so there won't be any space for the wings to tumble, but let's start grabbing a couple, mix the rub in, see how many we can get. I think that's about as full as I'm gonna put that piece. Could fill the bottom part of our basket now with a couple more wings, so there's still, again, space for things to move around. All right, that looks good. Again, I've left a little space and I'm just gonna eyeball that and say based off of, oh, well, there's about a dozen wings there. So that's a, normally about a pound. So I think on scientific version here is we got uh, just over four pounds of wings, not bad. Let's close this up. Again, still lots of space up top for things to move around uh, so we can get some good tumbling action. Let's, let's go get this on the Joe Jr. Open up our dome. Drop in our rotisserie ring. Actually, I think I guessed pretty close for these tabs. I'll just loosen them up a bit so I can get the rotisserie spit in a little bit more to our motor. Once I got that in position, I see that I just need to adjust our tabs a little bit, but our charcoal is kicking. So I need some high heat gloves to quickly slide this over. Power, let those cook. Okay, so the game plan from here is going to be just like every best wing recipe method that I have shared, which lands on uh, this sort of approach, where we're gonna cook our wings first with a little bit of smoke. I forgot to show you that uh, off camera, but I used one of those bourbon barrel smoking piece chunks that I picked up on Amazon. I think they're called smoking bricks and added that for a little bit of smoke for about 15 minutes at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Then we're gonna go vents open, dome open, and let the flames fly to help get a little bit of color and crisp on the skin, help render out the fat on the chicken wing skin. And you have a couple options here now in terms of saucing them. You can absolutely sauce them and toss them back in the basket to finish. But I promise if you do this, it'll be the last time you do this, particularly if you're the person who does the dishes or you're married to someone who does the dishes, <laughs> this would be the one and only time you do that as the sugars in the sauce really stick to the basket. I took it inside already, but the Napoleon basket was notorious for this. I, I never got it clean after trying that the first time. The Kamado Joe basket is much more forgiving as it has sort of bars that uh, don't grab onto those sugars. Uh, but even that is not something that you wanna do. And so I'm gonna stick with the tried and true method here of when I remove them for sauce and toss them, I'll take out the rotisserie unit, drop back in our grid, our cooking grid, and just let that caramelize for a few minutes over the glowing coal that we have left inside of our Joe Jr. and we'll be ready for our taste test. When that's all done, I'll meet you over in the kitchen and see how we did. 
Well, there's not really a tell so far that these have been cooked on the Joe Jr. versus anything that I might do on a classic or big Joe size, but let's see if they taste half as good as they look. Mandatory blue cheese. Cheers. That's a good wing. Grabbed a drum just in case we need to check that, but I already know. Well, there's a size matters joke somewhere around here, but I just can't put my finger on it. But that does not apply to our Joe Jr. This is small and mighty, and these wings taste exactly like a rotisserie then grilled wing should. They're fantastic, and before they cool down, I'm gonna finish them off. I can't wait to reveal the next surprise that I have in store for the Joe Jr., but if you happen to be a fan like I am of small Kamados that can do big impressive things, you're gonna love what I have in store later this spring. If you're new, make sure you hit the subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you're alerted. And if you've got a question about this or anything else that you can do in the Joe Jr., feel free to ask me in person on my next Members Live where we can go live one-on-one -on -one and interact uh, real time and you can ask your questions and get them answered right away. That's it for today. I'm James from Snowcat Barbecue signing off. Remember, don't be afraid to fire it up.